All right, we're back. It is Friday. And as you know, we do a Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? Hey, man, I'm doing great. It's, uh, it's, I always enjoy these conversations. It allows me to look back at the entire week instead of one day. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for all that you share and all the work that you do to prepare for this. So um, today is April the 8th, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, the world, the economic world definitely feels like it's changing where we have a war in the Ukraine and Russia. Um, lots of talk about gas, oil, obviously um, real estate, I believe is starting to, to be affected. Let's talk about it. Talk about consumer retreat. What did you see there this week? Yeah. So one of the things that I've studied for 30 years, and if you watch my daily shows, we're always talking about the consumer, right? The consumer drives the bus. The consumer is 68% of the economy. Inside the consumer, there's even a driving force of them. So what people may not realize is about 25% of families in the United States uh, combine, have a combined income of, of 100 grand or more. Uh, what is interesting about that group of only 25% is they make up 75% of consumption. It kind of makes sense, right? You got to have disposable income to buy stuff. So it is this group that is taken a dark turn right? They are getting more conservative. They are delaying purchases. They are eating out less. They are driving less. So when this collection of consumers, you know, catches a cold, uh, it's not far behind. Usually the economy goes into a recession. So I think the consumers are retreating and we're going to see it uh, in retail numbers. We're going to see it in housing. We're going to see it in new car sales. Um, it's, it's going to be meaningful. Uh, it, is, it is coming. It's not currently happening. It's not in the numbers today, but uh, I think it's pretty clear that it is coming. So uh, I enjoy watching them, and I think they're telling us, be conservative. Be conservative. I'm noticing that as well. I want to ask you, what did you see this last week? I know interest rates are a big concern for our industry. What did you see with 30-year rates? 30-year rates broke 5%. Now, when you're like Ty and I, you've been doing this game for 20 or 30 years, you're like 5%, damn, give me as much of that as you can. But if you've been in the game three, four, five years, you're like, where'd my 2% money go? And, you know, let's be clear, right? We've had some rising prices and now we have rising prices and rising interest rates. That is going to hurt demand. And it, we'll talk about in a minute. I think it hurts supply as well. But we hit a psychological number. 5% 30-year money owner rock is a game changer. There is talk about it going up from here and potentially hitting 6% sometime later this year. Game changer, right? If you're in the mortgage industry, you're in the real estate. If you're in the mortgage industry, oh, watch out. You know, get a second job because it's, it's pretty dicey. Um, but if you're a real estate agent, realize that your buyers may not be qualified. There are pre-approvals that are written that aren't worth the paper they're written on uh, because you can qualify for a lot at three and a half and not as much at five. So yeah, interest rates broke. I mean, Ty, they had not broken 5% since like 2012 or 13. They got close in 18. Uh, they got as high as 4.94, didn't break five. Uh, we broke five this week. So pay attention. Pay attention, folks. It is moving. Absolutely. And it's, it, I've got to say, you've been calling this, you've been talking about it for the last six to nine months. Mm -hmm. And then especially over the last probably six, eight weeks, Yeah, you've been calling it and we've almost been a kind of like this expectation. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet. And if you look at January, February episodes, we were anticipating it, but it wasn't mm -hmm. happening. And boom, all of a sudden, the last three, four weeks, it's happening. So yeah, very interesting times. What do you see next with the Fed? What do you see happening with the Fed? They did not have a meeting in April, if I'm nope. No, uh, May 3rd and 4th next okay. meeting. So I have been calling for, if you watch my daily shows, I've been calling for it since before it was pretty well known. They should have done 50 last time. And I, oh, by the way, the Fed meeting minutes said they should have, which so I feel better about being right again. Uh, they're going to do 50 next month or, or in May. And I think they do 50 in June. The Fed ain't playing around. There's a lot of people that are in the buy the dip crowd. You know, the Fed's just going to talk and not do anything. I think they are greatly mistaken and uh, are, ri are taking risks that I think are unwise. I think the Fed is here. I think they're going to get back to neutral, which is two and a half, arguably 
uh, Bullard, James Bullard came out last night and said uh, he wants to see it at three and a half by December. Think about that, folks. The Fed funds rate at three and a half means the two, the two is probably at five, four and three quarters, five, tens at probably five, seven, five, six, 30 year money is probably six and a half. Woo! Man, James Bullard ain't playing around. I'm not calling for that, but that's what James is calling for. Very interesting. And for some of the newer viewers, explain what, when you say 50, you're talking about 50 basis points. Explain what 50 basis points is. Explain what 100 basis points is. Just so that we want to yeah. make sure our audience is getting educated and understands the language. When you're watching CNBC and they talk about 25 basis points or 50 basis points, mm -hmm. just break that down, Michael. Yeah, thank you for doing that. I, I sometimes get lost in my vocabulary. So, uh, so if I say rates are at 5% and then rates go to 6%, that is 100 basis points, right? So a basis points is like 6.8. One six point eight two. That's one basis point. So, a hundred basis points is a full percentage point. Five five to six five. Five two to six two. Uh, so that's a basis point. Got it. So fifty basis points basically is equivalent to a half a percent. This is the same words. Fifty basis half a point. Same thing. 50. Same thing. A hundred basis points is one full point. Correct. One full percentage point. So, just making sure that we want. We want, obviously, this audience to move along and understand. The one thing is, is when you can see the change and understand the language and you can see and you hear this, you can adapt quicker. You can make better decisions for whatever your next move is. But more importantly, your next three to five moves. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? How are you going to anticipate? I want to move on to the next topic, which is demand and supply. We've been talking about supply and demand, demand and supply. There's a new word you've been talking about, which is destruction. Explain mm -hmm. the demand and supply destruction and what does that mean and what do you see happening? Yeah, one of the things you learn when you study economics is a lot of things boil down to supply and demand, right? Supply is in, in the real estate world is very easy, right? It's listed for sale. Demand is, a, demand is actually a multivariable function because the first part of demand is you have to want it. Like Lamborghini, right? Or a Ferrari, right? We all want one. That's not demand. Demand is the want and the ability to pay, right? So what we have seen with the Fed raising rates and the mortgage market raising 200 basis points or 250 is a lot less people can qualify, right? So we're seeing demand destruction right now. In fact, it is arguably so that the Fed raising of rates really is entirely demand destructive. Across all industries, debt, cars, student loans, all of these things, destructive, because less people can qualify to get it done. I believe because the Fed kept rates too low for too long, meaning two years, we are actually going to see an interesting phenomenon that I don't think has been talked about before. And I did a survey of all my experts uh, about supply destruction. So simply said is, I don't think we're going to get as much listings because think about it, just as a real estate agent, think about anybody you sold a home to last year, first time home buyer, they're in a home, you got them in, A, they've seen 50 grand in appreciation, congratulations, good for them. But they also have a 2.5% 30-year mortgage. You want to go to them and get them to buy a new home today, right? Makes total sense. Hey, sell that home. You got all this equity. You want a newer home, a new neighborhood, another bedroom. You're pregnant again. Get a bigger house. They're excited. They go out with you. They look on the weekend. They see a 400K house instead of a 250 house. They're looking at that. Then they go to their mortgage broker and they realize they don't have a 2.5% mortgage. Now it's five or five and a quarter or five and a half. Then they look at the payment and go, my payment's going to triple? Honey, we don't need a new house. We are staying put. So I believe move up, buy or stop. I believe it, it's, I just believe supply is going to go way down. We did 6.6 .6 million transactions last year, new homes and existing. I think, I think housing transactions crashed 25% this year and maybe 50% peak to trough. So uh, I don't have a lot of good things to say. And again, I think it's going to be just as much demand as supply destruction. Wow. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I see it, Michael. Um, people are pulling off. They're getting on the sidelines again. Yeah. I think they're scratching their head, trying to figure it out. And it's interesting too, that um, on a lot of the buy boxes, 
which this will lead us to our next, our next yeah. and last portion. Yeah. On a lot of the buy boxes, I'm starting to see something go into contract after seven days, but then come back on the market. And that's an interesting thing. And we have not seen that. I'm not seeing it in high volume, but I think it's something so that it's, grows. It's a trickle, right? So what I would tell you in closing topic is uh, investors, people that follow one rental at a time, part of Ty's community, you should be getting excited. Because you are seeing demand destruction. You are seeing, seeing supply destruction. But what supply is coming is will be motivated sellers. We should only be writing great offers. This is the time. If you're going to pay six, six and a half, seven, eight percent, 30 your money, you better get a great deal. Write great deals. I have somebody that follows me that was looking for a fourplex. The fourplex was listed at 1.3. Not a great deal. A great deal at 1.1. He had the courage to write it at 1.1. Uh, and now they're in countering phase. Only write great offers. This is not last year. It is a new year, a new market. Home buyers are running away. They're scared. Uh, so investors start writing offers. Only write great offers. You'll still be told no a lot, but your counters will go up. You will finally find a motivated seller and you will do a great deal. Investors should be ecstatic about the market that is coming because we will have the ability to only do great deals. And I am so excited. Yes, sir. We are excited. I've got to agree with you totally, Michael. I would say that for our audience, for the people that are a part of the one rental at a time, your time is now. You've been doing the work. You've been studying your market. You've been studying your buy box. And guess what? Those opportunities are now going to come. We're seeing properties days on market are going to grow. The uh, back on market deals falling out of escrow, the properties that are not financeable, that go into escrow, that shouldn't go into escrow with a homeowner are now falling back mm -hmm. off the market, yep. coming back to the public to buy. So tremendous opportunity. Also, all of that low interest, everything that was originated over the last two or three years, the last four or five, seven years. All of that is a great potential for creative financing, for subject to, for you to go out and actually buy some of these properties as people become uncertain. There's going to be tremendous opportunity coming over the next, I believe, 6, 12, 18, 24 months. Michael, thank you for all that you do and all that you share. Um, I want to just encourage people, the books, they're mm -hmm. right here. We give, we've given away a lot of them. If you've already gotten the book, Amazon, please give this man a five-star review. Where can people find out? And I think now more than ever, if they're not a part of your course, hmm. they need to learn your course yeah. about studying the market, buy box, looking at it in the morning, the discipline of looking at it twice a day, morning and afternoon or evening. Mm -hmm. Where can people get information on the course? Yeah, just go to onerentalatatime.com. There is a uh, sub-menu called courses. And if you really pay attention, there's an Easter egg on my website that will allow you to get a free t-shirt that says, I use inflation to get rich. Uh, there's an Easter egg there for people to get the course and you use this Easter egg, uh, I will mail you a t-shirt. I love it. There you go, folks. Thank you, Michael, for all that you do. Have a great weekend. Take care.